Well, hello and welcome back. I am, of course, here with my FTM 200. And you'll notice that the screen looks a little bit different. That's because I'm listening to a digital net. And of course, there's some extra stuff on the screen. Um, when you get this radio or you look at the material for it, you see listed on there that it, while it's a dual band radio, it is also C4 FM capable. It's really not that hard to operate and something that I've been interested in uh, learning about and participating in. In this video, I will cover some of those basic operations to get you started. If you have a C4 FM capable radio, you already have everything you need to get started. There's some terminology associated that'll help you understand where to go and what to look for. We'll go over that. And we'll also go over what I found uh, to be an easy trick for finding a repeater, or otherwise known as a local node. If you don't own this radio and you're not familiar with it, you're looking at the faceplate of the FTM200. It is a dual band 50 watt transceiver that operates in 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And of course, as we already said, it is equipped for C4 FM operation right out of the box. Okay, jumping right in. C4 FM is continuous four level frequency shift keying. It's a digital modulation scheme used in amateur radio and commercial radio systems. It is a type of frequency modulation, that's FM, that uses four different audio tones to represent digital data. C4 FM is known for its high quality audio and its ability to maintain reliable communications even in noisy or weak signal conditions. That's a description that comes right from Yezu's site. In practice, I think that is generally true, but when you talk to people who have been in and playing with this a little longer, um, like digital, when it's working, it's great and it sounds wonderful. But when you're out of range of a repeater or a local node, um, you don't have the ability to play with weak signal you know, just try and get through and be heard. It either works or it doesn't work. We're now looking at a diagram that comes from the wires manual that you can find for the FTM200. One of the things you notice as you dig into it, the radio comes with a manual, but if you go to the Yesu site, you find a number of other manuals that cover some of the more advanced modes or things that can be done with this radio. And the Wires X manual is one of them. Of course, you see the big title there, Wires X, and with a lot of local nodes and the Wires server in the middle. Uh, we have the HRI 200 and a PC on the left and right there. And then, of course, you see a station listed, and I have one highlighted on the left. Um, so what we're talking about today is the station on the uh, operation only. So the rest of the infrastructure, you do not have to have equ the equipment in order to participate in this network that you see pictured. So really, you can take it much further, as is implied in this picture. You could, you could pick up equipment for the local node, the HRI 200, have it connected to your PC. You can also connect the FTM 200 and other C4 FM radio to your computer with, without the HRI 200, but that's something I will try to get into in a future video. Looking at this picture, it seems straightforward. In practice, I kind of got stuck here for a while. Didn't really know how to find a local node. You know, as I said already, I wasn't planning to set one up myself. So this is where understanding another term that is not listed here comes into play. You need to know what fusion means, system fusion. So the trick here is to understand the wires term fusion or system fusion. And that refers to uh, repeaters that are capable of repeating digital signals. They can also transmit normal analog as well. So they're flexible. And knowing that is your gateway to unlocking the digital modes right out of the box. On Yesu's site, you find this description. System fusion is Yesu's implementation of digital amateur radio utilizing C4FM for level FSK technology to transmit digital voice and data over the amateur radio bands. Fusion repeaters can transmit both digital and analog signals. In practice, you need to find a local repeater that offers system fusion. To find a local node or repeater, 
look for a listing that includes Fusion in the repeater description. One of the easiest ways I found is Repeater Book app. That app will use your phone's location. You will get a filterable list. You'll have to do some listening to find hams operating in the digital mode, but it's totally possible. So once I found a repeater that is Fusion capable, I programmed it into my FGM 200. And the next thing you have to do is switch to digital operation, which you can do with the DX button on the front left. And you'll just tap that button until you get to the mode that you want to use. Um, I advise using the DN with a line over it. And uh, for those familiar with the radial, you'll know that that is an auto mode. So with the line over it, if the radio hears the repeater sending a digital transmission, it will receive that digital. But if somebody's coming in analog, it will repeat that for you as well. So it'll automatically do that. You do not have to swap back and forth uh, in order to catch any activity that's happening on the repeater. Next, it's helpful to know uh, some of the color coding that's happening on the screen of the radio. When you look at it in analog mode, you'll notice the, of course, the reception meter uh, below the frequency and whatever name you've chosen. And on the left of that is a color bar. In analog mode, it's fully green. Uh, but in digital mode, you get another little visual cue, the lower portion of that bar turns blue. So you'll know that you're actually receiving a digital signal. And of course, your other cue, of course, is the DN that we talked about a moment ago. And it's interesting to note, and you'll see in this clip here, that I cycle the modes while we are listening to this digital net. And when I get to strictly analog, as noted by the FM on the right there, on the top right, all we hear is noise. And you can tell just with that simple test that the frequency modulation that we're hearing is not analog. In digital mode, it's just like analog, of course. So you just push the ETT button on the microphone and you're good to transmit. What's really nice about this is we get some extra information on the screen. We can see the person's call sign, the station's call sign that's talking, along with their name. And really, that's all there is to it. So once you've passed the hurdle of finding a local node, you can get started. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, leave me a like and a comment if you have some additional information, something that would be helpful for folks that are trying to get involved in the digital. And I hope you'll come back again for a future video. Talk to you later.